So we have finished doing um, expressions, and now we're ready to tackle the next part of algebra, which is called solving equations. And um, the key difference between an equation and the stuff we did before, which were expressions, are that equations are simply pretty much the same thing. They are expressions with an equal sign. So where I said before, um, expressions were things that just, they were just math statements, they were just telling you, stating something, and you, you just had to simplify it into simpler terms. Um, equations have an equal sign, so equations are equal to something. We have to figure out what that something is. And that something, or that unknown number, as we know, is called a variable. So you must find out what that unknown number is. Um, and the way that you do that, and the phrase that I'll keep saying over and over and over again in this section, is you want to try to get the letter by itself. Think of these letters or variables as like antisocial. I don't want to be around anyone else. I don't want to be around any other numbers kind of things. So we want to get the letters by itself. Or as the fancy math term is, we want to isolate the variable. Now, the first few examples that I do, I'm going to warn you right now, the first few examples that I do, a lot of you are going to think, oh, I already know what the answer is. Why do we have to do these dorky steps? Well, you're going to have to do these dorky steps or something like them when we get to harder questions. So I'm not too concerned right now with what the answers are. I'm more concerned with, do you know how to follow these steps which are going to help you out? Uh, when you get to harder questions later on. Okay, so here is the first question. And when I say it's an easy question, it's about as easy as you can get. So the way you read this, remembering from your algebra language, is that some number plus 1 equals 2. Now I know a lot of you are screaming at your laptops right now saying, it's 1, it's 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Obviously it is. The answer is 1. But like I said before, I'm not that concerned about the answer. It's the steps and the method I want you to be exposed to and understand. So the answer is 1. Well, what I want you to do is prove that the answer actually is 1 using these four steps. And once you know these steps and totally understand these steps, you'll be able to tackle the hardest of hard algebra problems. Okay, so first off, again, what we want to do, the whole goal of algebra and equations is you want to get the letter by itself. I want to get this x, or this x wants to be by itself. We want to get this x all by itself. But this plus 1 is in the way. So in our four-step program here, to figure out how to solve this, we first want to see what is being done to the letter. The letter is being added by 1. That's plus 1 is bugging it. We want to get rid of it. To get rid of it, we do step 2. We do the opposite of what it is doing to the letter. So this is adding 1 to the letter, the variable x. We will do the opposite, which is subtract 1. Try to do it directly underneath. Third step, we do the same to the other side. It's an equation, it's only fair. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you should do to the other side as well. So directly underneath, do the exact same thing. We subtracted one from this side, we will subtract one from that side. Okay, now, the fourth step is we want to cancel out what's bothering the x. The whole point of doing the opposite of what it was doing to the x is we get a situation like this. 1 minus 1, which is 0. We want this to be gone. And we can show that with a nice little slash right through. This goes away. 1 minus 1 is 0. So the numbers here are gone, and our x now can live by itself. 
And you might be thinking, well, what about the this side here? Doesn't the isn't the x bothered by them? Well, when I say we want to get the letter by itself, we want to get the letter by itself on that side of the equal sign. Just pretend that this equal sign is like a brick wall, and then the x cannot see on the other side of the brick wall, and the brick wall uh, and the other side of the brick wall cannot see on this side. So, anyways, we got rid of the numbers here, cancel them out. We're left with x, and on the other side, we're left with two minus one, which is one. So x is like we thought it would be one. So what we did in the last step there is we cancelled out, and then on the other side, we just did the math. Whatever the math was, it was two minus one, which is one. Done. Okay. Let's see if we can use those four steps here for the next problem. Here. X plus 7 equals 18. And I know a lot of you know the answer already. I don't care about the answer. I want you to get used to the method. First, see what's being done to the letter. Then do the opposite. The same to the other side. And then cancel out. And then do the math. So, what's being done to the letter here? There's the letter, it's being added by 7. Next step, do the opposite. The opposite of adding 7, subtracting 7. Third step, do the same to the other side. Subtract 7. This then cancels out. If you want to be extra violent, you can double cancel out or double slash it out. What are you left with? Well, what the x wanted. It wanted to be by itself, and now it is by itself. <clears throat> it's also important when you're doing algebra to directly line up all the equal signs, just so you won't make any silly mistakes. So line up the equal sign nicely right underneath each other. So x is equal to, well, let's do the math on this side, 18 minus 7 is 11. So x is 11. Now, the neat thing about this is that you can actually check your own answers without any answer key for me. And so if I ever ask you to do a check, here's how you would do it. You would check your own answer. So you write the equation, the original question, x plus 7 equals 18. And we just do the substitution thing that we did a while ago. We're evaluating expressions, whatever you want to call it. We think that the answer is that x is 11. Well, let's try it out. Let's substitute in 11 into x. When we do that, whatever, whatever we sub in should go in brackets. 11 plus 7 equals 18. Is that true? Well, 11 plus 7 is 18. That matches the other side of the equation, 18, 18. Yes, we are supremely confident that we have the right answer that x is 11. I know a lot of you didn't have to do all this stuff, you can do it in your head, but again, later you'll get to trickier questions, and uh, just get used to this method. Okay, next, 11, sorry, uh, x minus 12 equals 14. This time, what's being done to the letter is that it's being subtracted by 12. Well, the opposite of subtracting by 12 is adding by 12. Do the same to the other side adding 12. This will cancel out. You're left with just x on the left hand side. And then 14 plus 12 on the right hand side is 26. Nicely lined up. The answer is 26. We could do the check, but uh, let's not worry about it for this one here. Alright, what if we have something like this? a plus 12 equals negative 22. So something plus 12 equals negative 22. There's the letter. It's not x this time, it's an a. Who cares? The letter is a letter. What's bugging it? This plus 12, or this adding 12. How do we get rid of adding 12? The opposite is subtract 12. Subtract 12 from the other side as well. This then, 12 minus 12, goes away. Because 12 minus 12 is 0. You're just left with A on this side, there's the equal sign, 
Now hopefully you know how to do your integers. The good thing is actually you're allowed to use your calculator for all this section, although you should know what this is. Uh, negative 22 minus 12. You're down 22, you're down 12, you are down 34. Circle your final answer. That's it. Okay, this algebra stuff is not very hard at all, is it? Okay, how about this one here? Y minus 18 equals negative 12. Same thing. Y is being subtracted by 18. We want to get the Y by itself. How do we do that? Get rid of the 18 by adding 18. The opposite of what it's doing. To the letter. Do the same to the other side. Add 18. This becomes 0. We slash it out. We're left with Y. Let's line up the equal sign. Then we do the math on this side. Negative 12 plus 18. You're down 12. You're up 18. You're up 6. Y equals 6. Okay. Now here's a little bit different looking problem, but it's the same old, same old. People freak out. Oh my god, there's a number first, and then there's a letter. So what? The same rule applies. You want to get the letter by itself by using the four steps. What's being done to the letter? A 12 is adding to it. Well, what's the opposite of adding 12? Subtracting 12. Do the same to the other side. The 12s are gone, because 12 minus 12 is 0. And you're just left with W equals 18 minus 12, 6. Okay, how about this one here? 3 equals y minus 7. So it's kind of flipped around the equation. Nothing to worry about. It's the same old, same old. There's the letter. Find the letter. There it is. What's being done to it? It's being subtracted by 7. We want to get rid of this. So we add 7. Add 7 to this side as well. This goes away. That was the whole point, again, of doing the opposite, so that it goes away. You're just left with y equals 3 plus 7, which is 10. Now, it's a little funny looking where it says 10 equals y. You could write it like that, nothing wrong with that. Or you could write y equals 10. 10 is y, y is 10. Don't care how you say it. That's the answer. All right, now, a lot of those questions you could probably do in your head. But what if you have a question like this, where you have A plus B equals C. And for this, the question people are telling you, they want to figure out what is A. When they say solve for A, that means get the A by itself. What is A equal to? Okay, well, we want to get this by itself. Well, what's bugging it? This is the plus b. How do you get rid of plus b? What's the opposite of plus b? Minus b. Whatever you do this side, you have to do to this side. Minus b. This becomes nothing. Cancels out. A b minus a b is no b's. You're left with just a on this side. Line up the equal sign. And then you're left with this, which I know it makes no sense to you, it makes no sense to me, but it is what it is. C minus B. We don't know what they are, so that's all you can do. A equals C minus B. C and B are not like terms, you can't subtract them, so that's it. A equals C minus B. Okay, so how about a question like this? What if you were to solve for cool. What is cool equal to? Well, math never lies, and math equations never lie, so let's see what this question is talking about and the truth that it is telling. So you link the, the word cool by itself. When it says solve for cool, it means get that by itself. Well, it's being bugged by the math. How to get rid of the minus math? Do the opposite, which is adding math to both sides and to this 
side as well. What happens with this? It's gone. We're left with just cool on this side. Cool equals, well, what is cool equal to? It's equal to via and math. There's nothing more true about a math equation. And there it is. Coolness is via and math. All right. Here's the skill testing questions. That, 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 and more absolute truths proved by math. Talk to you later. Bye.